Time to crank up the heat and do some new overclocking. Welcome to Simple Run. On this episode, I'll be going through and doing some uh, extremely basic overclocking with the goal of cranking up the heat on the 10600K to find the limitations of Noctua's DH15 and set up a a test PC going forward for different types of coolers so I can test out AIOs and get into custom loop and checking radiator thicknesses and kind of doing an overall cooling in that sense. Now, as you can see, that is not the same motherboard I had before or the same RAM. Um, after doing some troubleshooting, it ended up being the power button on the test bench that was wrong and bad. So, went through, ordered a new power button after I already got a new motherboard and set of RAM, and now everything works. It is the MSI Z490 Carbon. So it looks amazing, especially with the uh, all black Chromax on it and the black G-Skill. So, now that that's all settled in, let's go ahead and do a run through of the overclocking. So I've already got it set at 5.1. I'm going to try it at 5.2 gigahertz and we'll see if it blue screens again. Either way, I can walk you through the process and show you just how basic what I'm doing is. Now, be warned that overclocking like this does kind of let your voltage do what it wants to, which could, well, for one, will increase the heat, which was my goal. But two, it could limit the lifespan of your processor. Now, without testing, I cannot tell you how long that will be an issue. But as long as you go through and you stress test it and you make sure that it works before you start gaming, then you shouldn't run into any issues after that. Uh, the Z490 Carbon is really good about shutting everything down if there's an issue and letting you know. Um, cool. So let's get to overclocking. So for starters, you're going to want to either shut down or restart your computer. Now, after the restart, when it starts booting up, you can kind of just mash delete until it kicks you into the BIOS. Now, once into the BIOS, you'll hit F7. So this is what you should see when you turn it on. Now, as you can see, I've got the XMP profile turned on, which kicks my RAM up to 3600. I've already got this overclocked. Now I do have the voltage set at auto, so it is a little higher than most people would like, but it has been stable. Now to go through and do this very basic overclock, go hit F7, you go into overclock settings, and then you have the CPU ratio. Now when I was doing it, I was jumping by uh, 200 megahertz each go and then I would go in and give it a 10 minute test just to make sure it was all good. Now if it's not good from what you do right off the bat, the BIOS won't even boot. So let's go through and we'll set it to 52, which is your 5.2 gigahertz. Right, you've got your red showing your changes. Now you hit F10, lets you know what you change. You wanna save and exit. Of course you hit yes. Now what the computer is going to do is it's going to shut down, hopefully, and then it would do a PC check just to verify that everything's good and it likes what it's doing. Okay, so it'll go through and the motherboard's running checks look like it passed so we'll get in here and then we can stress test to see what we end up with now I'm using Cinebench and I've got HW monitor to kind of see what's going on so this will give me an idea of my temps my percentage used pretty much gives you an overall of everything as you can see right here, we are running 5.2. So I'm gonna set this to 10. 
I'm gonna try out multi-core and I'm gonna hit start. Now we'll see if it likes the 5.2 or not. Apparently it doesn't even like sandwich. All right, now those temperatures are climbing and blue screen. So 5.1 seems to be the limit for what we're doing with this cooler. Now I might try 5.2 with the AIO, I might not. Now it's gonna reboot. I'm gonna wanna go back into BIOS. I'm gonna go back to your overclock settings. Now as you can see, so 5.2 and the V core is up to 1.4. So that means that it was putting out a lot of heat, which was my goal, but we found the limitations. So 51, which is your 5.1, F10, yes, and it'll reboot. And that's it. You go through doing it baby steps and see what you come up with. All right. Now it looks like the max we're going to get on air cooling is going to be 5.1 gigahertz. Now in comparison, my 9900KS runs five across the board all the time. And the 10600K at 5.1 of course, beats it on single core. Now, multi-core is a different story. My 9900KS does get about 2,000 points better on Cinebench than the 10600K. Now, part of that is because, well, you've got four more threads, you know, two more cores. So that's a big deal when you're doing multi-core, which is why Intel's not keeping up with AMD on multi-core in the slightest. Now, I'm gonna throw up a graph to kind of give you a rundown of what temperatures I was seeing as I was running through the overclock. Now, when I ran it stock, and this is all Cinebench R23 for 10 minute tests. Now at 5.1, I did the half hour. You're not gonna see that score. I only ran it for stability. Okay, now temperature wise, 4.5 was sitting at 62 degrees Celsius, which is great for just running anything. Now, of course, if you can get higher, get higher, but temperature wise, that's kind of where I would like to sit overclocked, which isn't always possible, especially on just air. Now, one thing I will recommend, do not turn on game mode. When I ran game mode, I went from 4.5 to 4.6 gigahertz, but temperature wise, I went from 62 degrees Celsius all the way up to 76 degrees Celsius. Not good. Now, to shed a little more light on that, when I overclocked it to 4.8, which was my first overclock outside of game mode, I was sitting at 67 degrees Celsius, nine degrees cooler than game mode's 4.6, while getting a lot more performance. From 4.8, I jumped to 5.0, which was a, quite the leap in temperature. I went from 67 to 79. Now, from five gigahertz to 5.1, I still seen a seven degree increase. Now from 5.1 to 5.2, it's just not doable on air. Uh, running at 5.2, it hit 91 and then it blue screened as it could not control the temperature. Now 5.1 on air is good for gaming. It's good for pretty much anything you're gonna do. Now the better thing about it is this was basic overclocking. This can be dialed in more and you can get better performance. You can probably turn down the voltage and tweak things to where you're getting 5.1 at a cooler rate. Since I wanted to do something basic that everyone can do easily, and I wanted to turn up the heat, I'm just gonna leave it at what I'm sitting. Now, as I run tests with other coolers, I will watch the voltage to make sure that the voltage is sitting around the same, which is 1.4 at the moment. Now, as long as that is the same, then I should be able to have a consistent test across the board between, you know, air cooling, AIOs, radiator thicknesses, how many fans, what brand of fans, you know, kind of whatever it is you guys are looking for for information, which if you wouldn't mind, comment down below on what you guys would like to see me testing and I can add that to the list. Now, I think that covers it for what we're doing here today. Um, the next step will be ordering an AIO and giving it you know, a run at that. Now it's not gonna be a fair comparison because I will be going with a 360 AIO. 
So it'll be interesting to see how the Noctua holds up at half of the price. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Your support is greatly appreciated. And see you next time.